we're back here to do the uh, change out of the headmaster here. So we've got it uh, prepped, ready to go, recovery machine ready to go. Have the uh, tank here, just finished pulling it down. Uh, got it in a vacuum. Pull right off the receiver, we've got power killed. Solenoid is inside, so we're liquid all the way from here to there. Pulling through my 3 8 hose, I'm letting it just naturally go on through. We'll start the pump here in a second as soon as it slows down. We'll reweigh our tank when we get done, but just kind of getting it prepped to go. We're planning on chopping out the service valve here. Seldomly do we ever use them, but they definitely cause enough problems as far as leaks. As I talked about in the other video, a lot of this oily looking crap, it probably came from just mainly that but if that's the case I don't know there's just no other leaks were found today is back to 14 degrees area so we're not going to spend a bunch of time out here uh, we're just going to get the uh, headmaster replaced and move on uh, going to yank off this panel right here to make it easier to get into now we'll be able to get in here nice and easily to these two components that I want to chop out I'm getting a better look in here kind of see oily residue here on the side it's really hard to say with this temperature that pressure is going to be so low we can put nitrogen behind it chances of getting a coil thanks to all the production that's been cut now we're kind of half time lucky if we can even get a condenser or a new unit otherwise i'd push for a whole new unit uh this one here 2011 so you know we're 10 years 11 years old it would not surprise me if it's not leaking, but at this point, what do you do? Needs changed out, got to get it going. Not a perfect world. Liquid's kind of boiling off there. Chug of luck, baby. Looks like we got the uh, liquid side taken care of. Got to hop on the suction. That glass looks like it's still kind of full, but you can see it's boiled off. Got a new dryer for that. We're going to swap that out. Going to have to sleeve this, unfortunately. These were half-inch valves they got. As you can see, you have the LAC D, uh, 4DS 100, 180. Well, unless you specify what size, it appears that you got to sleeve it otherwise, which kind of sucks because that's more work that you probably didn't have to do if we would have gotten that one and you just got one marking there on it well that side was pulled into a vacuum too so it must have uh either called which i don't believe that solenoid's powered by the, anything inside so i would say it just sucked it in reverse and got it through we can go ahead and start cutting things out and we'll sleeve this we'll just use a piece of half inch stub copper in each one of those so like i said we ended up just getting some half inch uh, pipe marking it cutting it ream it out got it ready to go got a piece of three eighths there for our quarter inch sleeve they do make nice bushings for this but obviously i don't have that with me today you could try cutting it out but i'm a little short on length here on pipe so i'm not going to i'm just going to undo it and pull it out of there No splits, there we go. Just gotta do a couple repositions. It's so cold out here, my hose is barely bend on my hose and on my torches. Um, I did put some nitrogen through it. I'm not running that currently right now. I don't know if I'm gonna make that one off. Move away from there before you pull it apart and you're less likely to get your flash back off of the uh, oil that could be trapped in there. Especially when it's not feeding correctly. Got a little bit of oil stuff in here to catch on fire. You'll have that on these big jobs. <laughs> There's that. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. 
little bit of prep work makes all the difference in the world to this stuff. No, we're not going to replace this. We're just going to get rid of it. Really, there's no reason for it to bend there to begin with, unless there was a repair made. All right, so we got our prep ready to go. Pretty doggone close. Not a perfect fit, but it uh, it's straight. Everything's in as far as it needs to go. You can see they actually uh, did the same thing with that one there. But we got that ready to go. We got our dryer here to get back out. We'll put that in at the very last minute so that we don't uh, have it absorbing moisture. This one here might be a little more difficult just because we got to pull that loose so we can pull it out. Um, but other than that, it shouldn't be too bad. We did put some knives in through it. It'd be nice if it was flowing, but at this point, we just gonna have to call the uh, nitrogen police and uh, have them give me a ticket, I guess. I did prep my metal, which is critical on getting this as quickly on and off as possible. What you can do with this, you need to get a little pipe first, pull into it. Uphill, my favorite of all things to do. Same deal. Keep that base, work our way to the medium top one. Pull that crap right uphill. Not the funnest thing in the world, but you can do it. Just like that. Too much heat, she all goes to crap. Same thing here, yeah, let's get that. Thing pulled up in there like that. Pull her up, capillary up, baby. Looks like I got it. We're gonna cut it here, that way we can swing it in and out. Raising it up and down is not gonna be as easy to do. As usual, electricians have got their freaking wires right in the damn way. So we got this out of there. All I have was rigid copper, so I went ahead and heated it up with the hand torch, cooled it back down, bent the 90 on there, turned out perfect. Uh, so now we're just going to form this up here and then swedge it, which uh, I'll have to heat it up again so I can swedge it there. But the key seems to be just to uh, pull it down, then, then run it through the swedger, and you're fine after that. Yeah, we should be good if we kind of go about right there. nothing in there you can't see it but believe me I seen this done on YouTube so it's it's got to be right here we go we'll heat that up slide it up in the hole it's just like brand new again Use 
fixed my rubber end there so I didn't bang the living snot out of that pipe. Of course, you know, this costs a lot more than what that little pipe did. Shoot that from the bottom, get it sucked in there. Try not to burn up the freaking conduit here, it's in the way. We got that cleaned up. Not too bad. It uh, definitely want to make sure you cool that down before you uh, run that through your bender, though, because it will melt those uh, shoes if they're made out of plastic, like the uh, Hillmore is. Uh, the only thing we got to do now is get the filter dryer in there and uh, go ahead and get her under a pressure test. Make sure nothing's leaking over here. All this cleaned up pretty good. Doesn't look too bad for what we had to work with. It would have been nice if it had been the exact same diameter and wouldn't have had a fool with that, but just the way things go sometimes. The little dot's still green. Nothing was overheated. It's so freaking cold out here. That thing cooled down so fast. It's, uh, I just why I didn't wrap it. Got to take that freaking uh, fan cycle control out of there yet. Pull a vac on it after we do the pressure test and see what we got. Just got the uh, pressure on there. We got 265 on the uh, high side. Still waiting for the low yet. I had a little leak on the back side over here, but if you can't see your work because it's up here in the freaking ass air and you can't get to it, you will probably have a leak. So, how to get the uh, ladder, I'll get to that. I went ahead and sprayed some of this down. I'm gonna get my ultrasonic out and see if I can hear it. These are like a nice solid stream now. Granted, like I said, it's 14 degrees out here, so this uh, big blue uh, is not the low temp stuff. So only a certain amount of time until it starts to freeze up and wouldn't bubble anyways. I'm not hearing anything. If we have a leak, we would have caught it. I don't hear it. I got the fan cycle control out of there. That's all back to normal. Everything's sprung back up. We need to pull our vacuum now. You guys know I love these hoses, but when you're in this 15 degree weather, hell, anything below probably 50 degrees, these things turn into a freaking harder rock thing. They don't, do not move at all. I'm trying to speed it up to no reason why I'm doing it like this with these because it's just faster. Sounds like the Manitowoc's having a bad day there. Yeah, motor's going out on it. So anyhow, the um, vacuum's pulled. We're blood all the way up to our hoses. We've got our zeroed out there on the scale. So let's just suck it in as much as we can. We're just kind of you know, weigh it in and see what we get. It's going to be usually a real treat trying to get this refrigerant back in there when it's this uh, cold. It just does not usually want to go back in. Get that out of negative. I think we added like eight and a half pounds or something like that the last time. So we should have at least that amount or more. We'll see where we're at here. We're going to let it naturally get in there as far as we can. We'll suck the rest of it in. It took uh, eight pounds and a half in so far. The unit's turned on. You can see it feeding. And the suction pressure is coming up there at about, you know, 19 and rising. So it should kick on here in a moment. But we'll see where we're at, see if we can pull the rest of it in. Worst case scenario. Uh, one of the little tricks you can do is pump it down and then that way the suction drops even lower. Cycle last so far is full, which is good. Hopefully this thing's feeding right this time. It'll take a little bit. Of course it just shut off. And it's coming back up again. It just, that initial startup takes a while, a lot of times. Yeah, it's so freaking cold out here. There it goes again. I'm going with the upside down tank just because of the dip tube. I did want to deal with it. I wanted as much flow as I could get. And uh, so that was kind of the reason why I did it the way I'm doing it. 
All right, so we're warm there, warm there, which is good. And it feels like it's fairly warm there. Yeah, it's definitely cold at the bottom, which is good. And I've got more heat coming out of the top, so she is feeding correctly so far. Head pressure, uh, 150 and rising, which is good. So we're already on the right track. Uh, looks like we've about got the last of our refrigerant in there, so it, it probably didn't have a whole lot in it when I did it. We'll see if we can get the rest of that in there. It's still flashing, so I'm just, now that everything's feeding correctly, we should be able to get this where we need it at, and we'll get the final charge set up. Got her valved off there, just easier than getting to the receiver. Pulling that last bit in there. Let's see, uh, see if we can get it all out of that way. We ain't wasting any. Suction's not quite dropping yet. We still got that valve core pulled out of the suction service valve there, so that's still going to allow it to feed through pretty quickly. For the most part, though, it looks like we're holding pretty steady on uh, the side glass. It's been holding uh, full the whole time. I might add an extra pound or so just to make sure we're at you know close to the 80% mark. Ended up being right at nine and a half pounds. It pumped down, shut off. Let's go ahead and heat this up and see where we're at. We've got the thermal imager here. We'll see uh, see where we are. I'm gonna mark mark this down on our door wherever I put it at over there, and uh, that way we'll have it for later. Okay, as you can see, we are right in there at. Uh, well, let's see if I can hold this three things at once is where it's at. So we are, that's uh, probably about 65, 70%, which I'm uh, pretty good with that. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. Go ahead and rip this thing loose again and uh, see where our, uh, so we can watch our uh, head pressure control there. Okay, you can see it. See the hot gas coming through the bottom there, going right into the valve. And you can see how we don't have anything really coming uh, out of the bottom of it. So it's coming in the top and nothing much coming out of the condenser at the bottom. You can see it's feeding through. You can see it also there where it's going into the receiver. It's warmer there than what it is uh, coming out of the bottom. Now to kind of give you an idea of how that's feeding. You can see the whole bottom half, probably bottom quarter of it's not feeding. And a good portion of it to, to the left is not. I mean, it's feeding, but just the heat's being held back and being driven into the receiver to keep that head pressure up. All right, got her all back together. Got the clock, defrost clock set up. It's uh, just about ready to go through a defrost, which it's shut off and satisfied, so I'm not worried about it starting over for that. Uh, we already checked for leaks. We've got all the uh, leaking things out of it. Appears we should be good for a while. Marked it to held uh, nine and a half pounds, and all the other equipment is verified to be on, so we should be good to go. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the Instagram and Facebook pages under the same name. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.